How's it going everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I've got a very special treat for you. I'm going to be treating you to viewing, to witnessing my hair throughout the ages. My entire sort of hair journey if you like from the age of about well, 16 to now where we have no hair. I found some old pictures way back when and it really inspired me to kind of make this video. I think it's gonna be a fun little video to make and hopefully a fun video to watch. So let's get started. We jump in here straight away when I was just a little boy. I think we're talking about maybe one or two years old, something like that here. We're rocking the cardigan. And when I was younger, I actually had this sort of blonde, kind of quite thin, but it was very light, very blonde. And as I got older to sort of like five, six, seven, my hair became much darker. But we're gonna go from here because during my sort of school years, I pretty much rocked a similar sort of style. And we're gonna see that style now when we jump into, this is about 16 years old. So this is actually at uh, like a house party, a house party at um, my first girlfriend's house. She wasn't my girlfriend at the time, but you can see there, super skinny, rocking that sort of spiked up, but with the fringe down that sort of everyone was rocking at the time. Got a can of Heineken on the go, and we've got the collar up on the shirt, classic. And yeah, I rocked this look for quite a while. It's just short on the sides, longer on top, bit of hair gel in there, bit of product, spike it up, and yeah, this was on a little cruise I went on, a little family holiday, and I pretty much just rocked this look for a very long time. But when I was in college, so now we're talking sort of 17, uh, I got with my first girlfriend, and I was with my first girlfriend, and she was kind of into that longer hair look, and I started to grow my hair longer for the first time. And so this was when, you know, people started turning 18, we started going out and we're going with that longer look, it's not really any sort of style here. But anyway, as the hair went on, it got longer and longer. This is actually on my 18th birthday. You can see they're still super, super skinny. I was always like a real fat kid. And then as I sort of, you know, puberty hit, I got much taller. And yeah, all that weight sort of literally just rinsed off me. I kind of had that skinny fat look going on, tall and skinny, and I started to grow my hair long. I also used to rock this style quite often, where you've got the sort of beanie on the go, pulled back there with the sort of longer hair hanging out at the front. Uh, this was me again on a night out. Someone said I looked like this dude. Um, yeah, it kind of seemed like that longer sort of hair was in at the time, and so I just went with it. So the hair kept getting longer and longer. As you can see, I really liked this sort of white undershirt with the shirt over the top look at the time. Probably a byproduct of being insecure about how skinny I was. And yeah, the hair kept getting longer and longer and longer until, you know, this was a pre-everyone going off to university party. Uh, I was about 18 years old here. And yeah, the hair was getting real long, wasn't really doing anything with it. Oh yeah, <laughs> come on lads. <laughs> Going mental, the hair was super long and I went off to university with this long hair look. Um, this was in the first sort of flat that I had in uni, uni halls. This is fresh as week, I do believe. And there I am with the pearly whites and that super long hair. And it used to sort of flick out at the sides where it was so long uh, and because of that I used to often wear a hat like a trucker style but with the flat cap and it used to sort of curl up and out at the edges and at the back but that was about as long as it got until I was convinced to get my hair cut again by my girlfriend at the time the same girlfriend and she was into this whole I don't know what to call that alternative look so we got cut in this epic fringe and I actually remember I was on a night out um, and I was rocking this epic fringe and these guys at this bar were like taking the piss out of me. Um, I can't remember what they said, but something about having like the biggest fringe they've ever seen. Cause yeah, it was really, this haircut was expensive as well. I got it done in a really fancy like hair salon and yeah, really short at the sides with like really low on top, but this sort of epic fringe that came down. Not my favorite look, that one didn't last long, but enough to sort of go out on a few nights out. And yeah, I rocked this long fringe for quite a while. After that, I sort of, you know, enough's enough. I went back to that classic 
you know, short on the sides, bit longer on top, spiking it up, look. And this is where we enter the sort of, the frat boy, you know, the lad. I started hitting the gym much harder with this guy on, on, to my to my right here. This guy, really good friend of mine on the same course at uni. And funnily enough, he was actually already going bold in university. I think he was about a year older than me. So sort of, we're talking 22, 21, 22. You know, he was already losing his hair, but very, very slowly throughout the whole years we were at university. It never really, it never drastically fell out for him or anything like that. And yeah, here we go, look, we're, we're putting on some weight now, so I'm starting to hit the gym more. Uh, you know, I'm bulking up on that perma bulk. And yeah, I kept rocking this hair, you know, short on the sides, longer on top. You know, just classic lad, just, I don't know, this is like the most basic hairstyle you can get, really. Um, and then it started to get a little bit progressively shorter. I got it sort of faded in much shorter, like a one on the sides. It was really long on top with like a super short on the sides. And I really liked that look for a while. I thought it was a bit more manly at the time. And it kind of got a little bit more extreme. I kept getting it cut shorter and shorter. And I eventually was starting to pull off this sort of, well, I thought it was like a marine type look with that high fade and the skin. But you can see here, I was weighing like about 200 pounds in this picture here. I was still on that perma bulk. I thought, you know, you gotta eat, eat big to get big. I was eating a lot, smashing the gym, trying to really like put on as much muscle as I could because I was fed up with being that like skinny dude. And yeah, I was rocking this really short style for a long, long time. I got it cut quite regularly every sort of two weeks or so. Again, we're still at university. This has got to be about year three now of university. And I quite like this look. I started to slim down a little bit at this time. I, I realized I was like way, way too fat. And so I started to slim down a bit more. Um, but still rocking this super short on the sides with a bit longer on top. And it was at that point that I actually tried the zero all over and I rocked this like a zero all over. This picture isn't fantastic, but you can kind of tell. I'm still kind of chunky, but there's me rocking the zero all over. And I actually would get this cut like every week. I had no idea that I was gonna go bold, but I rocked this for, yeah, I wanna say a good few months, this whole zero all over phase. But the guy kept saying to me, you know, oh, you should probably, your hair's so nice, why'd you cut it off? And I kind of thought, yeah, you've got a point there. And this is the first time when I actually thought, oh, there could be one day when I don't actually have hair. And so I should probably make the most of it while I can. So I grew the hair back and I went back to the classic, you know, the thing that kind of worked well for me. I was working in a nightclub at the time, doing lots of these like parties with like hen do's and stuff like that. And the feedback I got from a lot of the women was that they liked this hair the most, you know, just that sort of classic style. And so, yeah, I rocked that for another good few years. And then after I got bored of that look, this whole new sort of, again, really thin on the sides, really um, short on the sides, but longer on top and you kind of sort of flop it over came into effect with that slight sort of parting there. And yeah, the style slightly changed, a bit longer on top, but still super short on the sides. And that is when I had a little trip to Barcelona here. And at the time, this was literally like my favorite picture right here. Classic duck face. I was really feeling myself here. Um, I kind of cut down a bit of that weight you got the jawline coming in there. And again, we've got the really super, super short sides with that kind of wave over the top. This was like my favorite picture at the time. Like I said, I had this as like all over my Facebook. I thought I was really nailing it here. I was really into wearing those sort of like lower cut tops as well, kind of show a bit of chest and trap action. Um, but anyway, that was my look for a long, long time. And these are all pictures of me on this holiday in Barcelona. There, just with this sort of classic look. Still nothing, still rocking that classic look. And that is when I kind of got bored of that. You know, everyone had the same hairstyle. And I was introduced to this thing called, called salt spray. So I started putting this salt spray on my hair rather than different product. And I kept growing the, the sort of hair out longer on top. And this is where we get this sort of messy, um, again, I'm wearing a wetsuit here, we went surfing, but I'm not, not a surfer by any means. But that kind of, you know, wavy look, I was putting the salt spray on my hair. This picture here actually taken on, I'm super hungover in this picture. It was taken the day after a night out. And this picture here is literally a couple of days before I moved to China. And you can see that hair, super thick, lots of it. Still short on the sides, but with that sort of messy look on top. And I was really enjoying this look. So then I moved to China, still rocking the same look. And 
this is actually my first haircut that I got in China. They couldn't really get that fade going. They didn't really know how to sort of do that fade. So I kept growing it longer, a bit longer, and, but still trying to keep maintain that same style. And my mum was actually mailing me this salt spray over in the post so I could continue to style it in that way. There's me with my dog when I first got my dog in China, looking super cute there. And yeah, I kept rocking this style for a long, long time. There's me in Thailand again. It got the hair cut a little bit shorter on the sides with that sort of mess going on on top. And that is when I decided that I was gonna give the long hair another try. And this time I was gonna go all out. I was gonna try and go for the man bun look. So I didn't cut my hair for ages. I kept using that salt spray in there. It kept getting longer and longer and longer. And then I started to wear hats a lot because the hair was getting too long to style using that sort of hairspray, using that salt spray. Again, I was having to sort of pull it back and it was looking really messy. And so I started to wear hats all the time, these sort of backwards cap look. I did, it was in that awkward stage, that in-between stage. So again, rocking the hats all the time. We finally got into a point where we get that little top knot on the go. And there's a little picture of me this has got to be, oh, this is after my first year in China. So I did all of that in my first year in China. And about this time, I was preparing to go to America. So I'd been on an, a diet, but my hair was in this really awkward stage. And again, I could get away with this in China because people would look at me however I looked, right? But I was going to America and I wasn't really feeling the man bun look because it obviously wasn't a full man bun yet. It was this weird little top knot, but I went with it anyway. But when I went to America, I was like, no, I'm gonna get rid of the top knot. I'm gonna put that salt spray back in there and I'm just gonna rock this sort of longish, messy look. And I was really, really liking this look. Um, it really sort of, I kept the, I started to grow in the beard for the first time and I feel like it was working for me. You know, the hair was sort of like pulled back, but not, you know, it wasn't pulled back. It was just sort of styled back, but again, this messy look and it would really come out if I got that salt spray in there. And especially if I got out into the wind, that is when I really got that optimal look. And again, these pictures here, you know, still rocking that same sort of low cut-ish top, got a nice tan on the go there nice little bit of facial hair and the hair and i was really feeling this hair for a long long time um you know my dad took a few pictures when i went back a few portraits and this picture here was like my favorite picture so we went from that picture of me in barcelona and then this was my all new most optimal look i was really really enjoying this look but after my first year i went back home i went back to china and people were kind of peer pressuring me saying that it looked really scruffy. You know, there's no sort of like alternative styles out here in China. And so it's clean cut or nothing really. And people were kept hassling me to get my hair cut. I buckled, I'm, for, I'm ashamed to say I buckled into the peer pressure and I went back to that short on the sides look. Classic look and I rocked that for a little while. Uh, you know, clean shaven. Again, always defaulting back to this sort of easy, this safe look. This is like, the safe look, and I'm not a fan of this look to be honest, just everyone has this haircut. So I rocked this for ages and then I decided I was gonna grow the hair again and grow the beard again. I'd failed the first time to fully achieve the man bun and I was going to try for a second time. I wanted the man bun with the beard look. So I started growing everything again, I stopped shaving, I stopped cutting my hair, and as you can see I kind of reached this like weird hobo stage. <laughs> and I went back to England and again I was trying to sort of get that same long hair it wasn't quite as long and this is the first this is the longest I had my beard for a very very long time but you can see there really sort of didn't come in the middle here at all and the tash even weaker than it is now but I went with it I kept going with it I, I still enjoyed this look you know, I enjoyed it the first time, uh, and so I was confident that I could get it the second time. Again, the beard here much longer than the first time around. And you can see the hair here. I just kept growing it, and I got the man bun to even more epic proportions. This is further than I, than I had gone the first time. And uh, just on a side note, this is probably the best I've ever looked physique-wise as well. This is my third year now in China. I was lean, uh, I was the strongest I've ever been, and yeah, I was really enjoying, you know, the way I was looking and my hair. 
And it was about this time that I actually met my girlfriend, or my future wife, I should say. And yeah, we started dating around this time. I was still rocking that sort of long hair, clean shaven look. Uh, I'd given up on the beard, but I was still going for that long hair. And I rocked this hair for ages. But, again, not feeling it, you know, I went for it, I went for that man bun, but I just didn't think it really suited me, uh, I, I didn't feel fully confident with it, and so again, I defaulted back to that short hair look. Loads of people said it looked much better, and I was going to university at the time, and so yeah, I sort of gave up on it again, guys, and I went for this sort of clean, really easy, simple look, and I rocked that for a long, long time. But it was about this time that I discovered that I was going bald. And it was about the time this picture was taken. You can see that I'm going for this side parting and a bit of a like Captain America look. I was trying again to, you know, maintain that short on the sides, longer on top, but with a little bit of a twist. And it was about this time that I discovered I was going to go bald. I was losing my hair, it was thin on top. And and I was blaming it on all sorts of things and I obviously I thought I wonder if it's because I had had long hair for so long I tied it up in this really tight man bun a lot of the time and I wonder if that had sort of kind of accelerated this hair loss I rocked this hair for as long as I could but during this time I already knew that it was going it was fading I was feeling super insecure about it I was always fussing with the back of my head again you can't really see it in these photos but it does look like my hair, sort of, if you think about it all over, is thinner than it once was. So, it felt thinner. I knew it had a bit, I had a bold patch at the back. I felt horrible about it. I felt really insecure about this whole hair thing. And when I got back to China for my fourth year, I said, sod it. And I went back to this look, which we've already seen, short on the sides I, I i call it the marine look you know really short longer on top but by getting my hair cut like this i could really see that things had progressed much faster than i thought and you can see in this picture if you've read my ebook you would have seen this picture look you've got like this three tone hair going on you've got really short at the sides where the hair still grows no problem it's dark but where i'd had it shaved that bit from that thin side it should be faded up then to like a longer like a grade two on top this should be all one color but because my hair was already super thin on the top there you can see it looks really thin it looks terrible and you can see it again in this picture here where this should be all one sort of color on the top there but you can notably see at the sides different color to on top where i'd had this diffused thinning in this central part of my head i decided after this, this lasted a month or two, I felt horrible about it still. I decided I was gonna go to a sort of the same grade all over, I went to a one all over. You can see here though, look, thin at the start there, thin on the top, and again, you can see there, look, even with a buzz cut, my sort of balding was still really, really noticeable. And so we arrive at this picture, and this is the first time that I shaved my head. A zero guard all over, I did it myself. I remember posting this picture up again on Instagram saying that this is the new me, and I felt bloody fantastic in this picture here. I just felt free from it all. We've spoken about it so many times before. This is the first time I went bold, and to be honest, I really liked it. I think a big part of that was, of course, because I was finally free from all that worry that I'd had that had been building up for so long. So I was rocking this zero guard. There's me showing my dad for the first time. So I went from the buzz cut and I started to use a razor all the time. And this is when I felt fully comfortable then. I was using this razor shave all the time. I was really, I was much happier now. I'd accepted it. It's gone, it'd been dealt with. And then we started the whole Bold Cafe movement. I was already making videos on YouTube, doing other things. And I talked briefly about my own hair loss story. It got super awesome feedback. And then we started Bold Cafe. And if you were one of the earlier subscribers, this here is the original picture we had for Bold Cafe. So there's me, you know, starting to do my tutorials. And I started to grow the beard in for the first time. And the beard, I took some pictures, you know, some selfies just to kind of keep up with the progress. And there is me admiring Dan's beard. This is the second episode of the podcast. Great episode, by the way. If you haven't seen it, check it out. That's at 10,000 views already. 
And I was looking at Dan here thinking, God damn, I need a beard just like that one. And so I committed to it. And five months later, we arrived at this iconic image here, the Bold Cafe logo, and this beard here. I feel like it came in quite nicely. This is where I really sort of came into the look. I started to really enjoy it. And you know, we played with some different styles. We did lots of different videos. And this is me now, you know, this is my image and I love it. It's anything but a safe look. I feel more confident looking like this. It was strange, I tried different styles in the past, whether it was from influence through, from other people or whether it was things that I wanted to try, but I always caved in to this sort of peer pressure of worrying about what other people thought of me. And now that I fully accepted this bold look with my beard, I don't think like that anymore. And for the first time, I feel really comfortable in myself and in my own image. And I think that's why I've been able to pull it off so well. So there you have it, that was my hair throughout the years. You know, lots of different styles. We've arrived at this one now, like I've said, you know, fully comfortable. I hope you found it interesting, you know, seeing how that sort of hair progressed. For certain, my hair started falling out way, way before I had noticed it. Because when I decided to shave it off, you could see there just how thin it was. And in those pictures where I was again rocking that safe style, about six months before I decided to buzz it off, it does look noticeably thinner compared to when I was in my sort of 20s or even when I first arrived here in China. But it feels great to be able to talk about it, you know, openly, honestly, not hide from anything, not feel ashamed, and I wish that for you too. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video and I wanna thank you so much for watching. So many more videos to come, lots more content on the way. Thank you again. If you liked it, give the video a like and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.